Hi guys, Yuri here again. Welcome to YB Plays Music. Last week I showed you how we can exercise playing both hands together and also playing without looking where we are on the keyboard. Now today we're gonna train our hands to go as wide as they can on the keyboard. Now how wide you exactly will be able to go on the keyboard with your fingers depends a lot on the size of your hands of course. If you have small hands you will usually not be able to reach as far as somebody with large hands or long fingers for that matter. So, but we can still exercise and reach the biggest range that our hands are capable of, right? Now I'm gonna show you an exercise that you can do um, with both hands separately. You can of course try it with both hands. Like I said in the last lesson, all the exercises that we do in future tutorials for piano, you can try those with both hands together as well. Just to learn how to play with both hands together with these exercises, it can only help. Now I'm gonna first show you with my right hand what we're gonna do. Between what fingers are we going to reach the most range? Well, logically you would say between the thumb and pinky, right? Now it's not that much of a difference between the pinky and thumb and the ring and thumb because both can reach pretty far usually uh, and they're not that far apart actually. Now for the exercise that we're gonna do, we're gonna start off between thumb and index finger and see how far we can reach between those two. And so we're gonna make our way up, start close together, then going wider, wider and wider on the keyboard. Then doing the same thing for our middle finger, same for our ring finger and same for our pinky finger, both right hand and left hand. Let's first start off by playing the C4 with our right thumb. Now, the note next to that is the D4. Let's play that one with the index finger together with the thumb. Again guys, like I said in the last video, that if it doesn't sound really pretty, it's not really the purpose of this exercise to sound pretty. It's just so that we teach our fingers to get their full reach. We still only use the wide keys, by the way. So we start off with thumb and index finger right next to each other. And now I'm gonna go a step further away from my thumb with the index finger every time we play. So we start with the D, go on further on the E, try one further on the F, Try one further on the G. If you can go further to the A. If you can go even further to the B. And for me, this is my limit when it comes to the distance between my thumb and index finger. I can try go further, but now I kind of play the B with it, which is not that clean. So for me, the limit is towards the B here, right? Now, you can try the same thing with your middle finger, like this. And you should be able to go a little bit further with your middle finger. I can pretty comfortably hit an octave with this. I can try this one further, but it's not really comfortable like that and I really have a lot of tension when I'm going too far. Now, when I go with my ring finger, I should be able to go even further. Don't know if I'll be able to play a full note wider, but I'll try. So this is possible. One further would be... This is not possible anymore. So, from the C, four to the D5. That's what I can hit between thumb and ring finger on my right hand. Then let's try it with my pinky. So I can actually go to the E5, but like you can see probably, my fingers are actually just on the edge of the keys. That's because right there, I can actually kind of push against the keys and widen my grip a little bit. If I want to go over the keys, I can't. I have to push the other keys to get that result. So on the edge, I can reach it, otherwise I can't. Now, there might be a difference 
in your left or right hand. For me, with my left hand, I can go a little bit wider than my right hand or at least more comfortably. And I'm gonna explain to you in a moment why that is. So now you can try the same thing with your left hand too, right? So for me, I can go pretty far, like with my left hand, it was kinda hard to hit an octave with thumb and index. With my left hand, that's a little bit more comfortable. Now I'm not gonna do the whole exercise with my left hand, but just I can go pretty comfortably from the A2 towards the C4. Now why is it that I can go a little bit more comfortably that far or that wide with my left hand? That is because my left hand is used to support my right hand and I use a lot of octaves when I play with my left hand and whilst I'm playing more of chords in my right hand. So my left hand is more used to having a wide range on the keyboard and that is uh, also partially why I can go a little further with my left hand or at least more comfortably. Let's try another exercise but this time more dynamic. What do I mean with that? The exercise that we've done, we play two notes together. So we can make it more dynamic by playing every note separately, going back to the C4 every time. And you can do it the same thing. Start with your index finger, then try the same thing with your middle finger. Try the same thing with your ring finger and pinky finger, like this. Okay, that last one wasn't really clean, that was my limit. But because this exercise is dynamic, we can actually go a little bit further because we don't have to keep the key down from the note we just played. We can reach just that little further away. Let's try the same thing with the middle finger. Yeah, and the end was also not that clean. And the same with the ring finger. And that's my limit as well. And now the pinky. And now you can do the same thing with your left hand as well. And if you want after that, you can do them with both hands together, but perhaps at different octaves, so they don't overlap like this. Okay, now guys, these exercises are actually to teach our fingers how to move them, how to get the widest grip. So these first couple of lessons are not really things that you should know. It's not about knowledge, it's about getting the technique and it's about uh, teaching your fingers how to move and to locate where they are, okay? So there are going to be some lessons in future videos where we're going to teach like which chords are where and how we can recognize certain chords and such like that. Um, but a lot of this requires technique and a lot of this requires exercise. And that is why I'm giving these to you guys. I hope you learned something again today, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the video. Also, don't forget to check out my other tutorial videos. I also have reaction videos and music videos for you guys to check out. So thank you very much. And see you guys in lesson five of Piano for Beginners. Bye. Last week in lesson three, I showed you how we can try and you will not be able to really reach a lot of, you will not be able to reach, you will, and, and reach the, just to be, just to, right? Now, I'm gonna, now I'm gonna show you, then playing two notes, to each other, then playing the two note, then playing the C. So, but I will try. I'll. Now, next, we're gonna try and more. Now, we're gonna. Now, next.
going back to the sea every time. Okay, but because we are that, but because this dyna, but we can go, we, we can reach just that little more, we can just, we can reach just that little further, we can just, and like I said, and now you can do this. Now, guys, this is, now guys, this, there are some exit for things you, where you should, uh, so these, uh, and how we can progress in certain, 